Greetings. Thank you for joining me tonight for Five from a Black Woman's Develop Your Business Plan in Five Easy Steps. My name is Nicole Porche, and I'm the founder of Buy from a Black Woman. Um, Buy from a Black Woman is a nonprofit organization that helps bring awareness to black women business owners and the people who support them. Um, this is me in the right-hand corner at an event earlier today. Um, Facebook and Instagram through a private event celebrating National Small Business Week. So they had an education series, and I got to play around with a new app called Boomerang. Well, new to me. Um, and what it is, it creates GIFs, GIFs, GIFs. <laughs> and I was able to go ahead and promote the buy from a black woman business with the button. So if you visit the Instagram page, if you follow the Instagram page, thank you. And if you don't, please follow, subscribe, all that stuff. But if you saw this on Facebook or Instagram, you see me playing around with it. I'm just trying to learn how to use these apps on social media. So yeah, so that's me. Um, but what you came here for tonight, tonight we will discuss what a business plan is, why it is important to create one, and what five steps you can take to help develop a business plan that is custom to you. Um, so what is a business plan? A business plan is a written description of your business future. A business plan is a powerful document. This tells the story of your company. For those of you who purchased the workbook, the workbook is there to guide you. But remember, your business plan is something that is your personalized roadmap to your future success. And for those of you who don't have the workbook, I will be making reference to that throughout the night. I'll do my best to acknowledge that, you know, not everybody has the workbook. Um, if you would like to purchase it, it is a $5 fee for the workbook for you to download it. And just send me an email at info at buy from a black woman and we can make that happen but you can also just you know write your notes to it the workbook is was created to help those who need um to help those who are like me um and that extra visual helps invoke thought and invoke the thought process and it lets you get guided and get started. So the workbook is a very handy tool, at least I hope it's a very handy tool to help you in developing your business plan. So a good business plan will help answer some of these questions. What is your business? Who are your existing or your potential customers and why should they buy from you? Who is your competition? Where are your competitors? Who are they? How do you differ from them? Um, how will your customers know about your business? What are your long-term goals for your business? And what are your short-term goals for your business? And identify what long-term and short-term means to you and your business. How much money does it cost to run your business? How much money do you need to start your business? Um, and how will you operate the basic functions of your business? And that's just, you know, just some simple first thought questions for you to answer um, there's a whole bunch more that I'm sure you can go into. And if you think of those, that's great. Answer them. If you are asking yourself questions about your business, write down the question and then answer that question. It's, it can be overwhelming, but you know, in the long run, it is worth, it is worth it. It will, I, will, I can say first-hand experience is worth it. And the other black woman business owners that I engage with and have conversations with, it's worth it. So take these steps to create that foundation for your business. It will be beneficial to you in the long run of things. So let's, let's ask, why are you creating a business plan? Why did you decide to join this class? What, why are you going into business? So what are some of the reasons why you create the business plan? Why are you going to, okay, um, to get a better understanding of what it is I'm doing, one person wrote. <laughs> Trust me, I understand that. Um, the other person wrote is to see if I do, to see if going into business for myself is something that I really need to do. Another person is right, do, can I afford to go into business for myself? And these are all good 
answers. So a business plan can help you and should help you figure out if you do need to go into business for yourself if it's something you could afford. Now, some people might say, you, how can you not afford to go into business for yourself? But just to see if it's feasible for where you're at in life right now. And if not, how do you get there? So those are good questions to, to answer. Um, you know, you can also answer, you know, what is your operation for your business going to be like? How to gain funding for your business? how to communicate your business to customers. So, you know, those are all very good reasons for developing a business plan. So, but make sure you ask yourself that. That should be your number one step. Why are you creating a business plan? And then ask yourself, well, before we get into that, we're going to go into the five steps. After you realize that, yes, I need to create a business plan and this is the reason why I am, here are five steps to go through to help develop your business plan. So the five steps we will discuss tonight would be your business. What is your business? Your market. Who are you selling your service or your products to? Your competitive and your SWOT, your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in your business and outside your business too. Your marketing, sales, and operations plans and the money. Your business. What is your business? What is your product and your service? For those of you who have the workbook and those of you who are using your notebook, take time to describe your product or your service. Explain what it is that you do or what it is that you sell. How long have you been in operation? Where will you operate? What type of business are you? Are you a nonprofit? Are you an LLC? Are you a sole proprietorship? Um, how are you going to fund this? How are you currently funding this business? And then most importantly, address what it is that makes your service or your product unique and why customers need what it is that you're offering. Um, you want to use this step, and you're going to come back to this part at the end once you formulate this part and go through step two to five, you'll be able to come back here and adjust accordingly to see how on target you were and how off target you were. Some business plans will call this the executive summary. When you look at, um, if you Google business plans or if you've seen examples of it, this would be the executive summary. This would be the snapshot of your business and what it is. If you were going to give a business plan to a funder or a lender, the first thing they would look at is your executive summary just to see what your pitch is and if you thought through all the steps before they even decide to give you money. So again, describe what your products and services are and all of that stuff and then go through the other steps and then come back to this and rewrite and reorganize what it is that your business is. You know what your business is. Who are you selling your business to? Who is your market? Know your market. Know your customers. To create a solid foundation for your business, you must know who you created your business for. What does that person look like? Um, take time in your books and describe who your ideal customer is. Get as detailed as you possibly can. Describe where they live, what they look like, what they don't like, what they do like. What is their income level, their education level? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? Do they have legs? Um, think about what your customer is because this will explain to not just potential lenders but also to you that you know who your customer is and you understand their need for your business or your service, I mean for your product or your service. Um, during the class last night, I asked a young lady, I said, well, what is your, what is your market? She explained to me what her business was. And I said, and her business was to, you know, it was a smoothie company. So when I asked, what is your market? She said, everyone, everyone is not your market. You created your product or your service with a potential person in mind. So when we got down to it, I asked her what her smoothies, like what they you know, how, 
how did they help people or did they help people or was it just a help a health smoothie and she said her smoothie was to help those that suffer from a chronic illness well then your market is not everyone if you are helping a certain part of a people who suffer from chronic illness because if there's a person who doesn't suffer from chronic illness will they drink your smoothie can they drink your smoothie will they benefit from it so know what it is that you're doing and then know who you're doing it for know your market know your customer and remember you identify your market because this is your business this is your product this is your service so you know who you're who you want to sell to do you want to sell to just the people in your zip code do you want to sell to just the people in your state do you want to ship across the country determining what your market and your customer will determine who you are up against as far as when it comes to the other steps with your competition and also your strength weaknesses opportunities and threats so know your market know your customer competitive and SWOT analysis um, this will determine who you're up against and how you measure up against them there are 10 million women-owned businesses in the United States of America. 10 million other women in this country own a business. 10 million, that is a huge number. It's small, but it's huge. I think um, I saw a report earlier this week that said LA had like 4 million people living just in the city. I, I couldn't imagine living in a city with 4 million people. I'm in Atlanta and traffic is ridiculous, so I couldn't imagine rush hour in a city that 4 million people live in, but 10 million women own businesses in the United States. So to think that you do not have any competition is ridiculous. There is somebody out there who has a business similar to yours working and targeting the same market that you are. And that's a good thing because that says that there's a need for your service and product. If there's already businesses out there serving your market the same way that you are then they did all the legwork for you because they already identify who your customer is and how to reach them and the best practices of that it's your job to identify who those competitors are and what they're doing and how their best practices could be implemented into your business are what you need to stop doing because the competitors are not doing this um i had put just make a list of your top three competitors and how your products and services are alike and how they're different. Um, you can use three, use five, use seven. I say odd numbers. I operate in odd numbers. But if you want to make a list of your top 10 competitors or your top three competitors, but make a list of who your competition is. Figure out how they're selling to their market. Figure out how you're different from them. What makes you unique? What makes your product stand out? And how you can leverage their best practices so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Very important things. Very important things. Don't work harder than you have to. Work smarter. That's what I learned, um, you know, in early corporate. Work smarter, not harder. If it's already there and it's working, use it to your benefit. Breaking down who you are up against will allow you to evaluate your company deeper internally. So make yourself a chart and then just put SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and analyze your company in every way using these four. Your strengths, what do you do better than anyone else? What are unique features that make you stand out? Consider your strengths from the point of view of your market. And if you don't know what your strengths are, ask the people who patronize you, why do they choose you over that five, seven that you just listed? Why do they come to you over your competition? Some things that make you strong, you have no idea sometimes. You, you don't know what your biggest strength is. It might be that on Tuesdays you smile more <laughs> and you just never notice it, but your customer might might notice that, and that's why they come and visit you on Tuesday. So, I mean, it could be, you'll be surprised and amazed at certain things that make you stronger and make you stand out, and it's something that you think you're just doing, but it makes that much of a difference to your customer. So if you're not sure what it is, ask them what it is. Um, 
your weaknesses. What can you improve on? What are things your competitors do better than you? Um, be realistic about your company and the areas that need improvement. There's, we're all missing out on something, so identify what that is. And if you don't know what it is, again, ask those people who are your customers where they see need for improvement. For me, one of my things is public speaking. I need to improve that. So I'm working on it and I'm putting myself out there in the position and the organization. I need to get over that fear. It's a weakness because I fear it. So, you know, full transparency with that is just I could improve on that and I'm working towards improving that. Opportunities. What good opportunities can you spot? Um, What interesting trends are you aware of that your competition might not be? When you made that list of who your competitors are, did you see any opportunities for your business with that? Were there any gaps in your competition that you can might introduce your business in? So think about that in that way. Also think about what opportunities are you not taking advantage of? Do you have a friend or a family member or even a colleague that, you know, does an event and you can use that as an opportunity to introduce your business, but you don't think it's a good fit? Or maybe there's a person that you know that does legal forms and you just never thought to use them because, you know, who knows why. But, you know, they'll be able to look over your forms for free. Talk about people with your business and figure out what opportunities there are that you can introduce your business in there. And then finally, threats. What obstacles do you face? Excuse me. What are your competitors doing so much better than you that they might take you out of business? Um, What are serious weaknesses that could be a real threat to your business? Um, this could be a number of different things. I'll use an example of an Uber driver because they're self-independent contractors. If you're an Uber driver and your car broke down, then what? You're out of business. That's a serious threat. That's something to think about and that's something to plan for in the future. Do you have a plan if your car does break down or if you don't get that oil change or if you don't have enough gas money to pick up that next ride? So, these are serious things to think about. And I will say this is not something that will all be answered in one night because this is something that you need to analyze each part of your business and figure it out and then work through how they can transfer over to something else. Um, another example could be, you know, a weakness of mine is just giving. I love to give. And that could be a weakness and that can be a strength. But how can I use that as a best practice for my company? And how can that be an opportunity and not a threat? So you just want to go ahead with each situation and each part of your company. Walk yourself through those and figure, figure it out how you can change your weaknesses into strengths and how your threats can become opportunities. Marketing, sales, and operations. From a business plan perspective, your sales and your marketing have two different type of meetings, two different functions, but they need to work together to be successful. Marketing is things you do to make customers aware of your products and services. This would be your main marketing message, your slogan, your tagline. Um, Nike is just do it. Target is the red dart. You know, this is how you know that belongs to them. When you see the Afro woman would buy from a black woman, not only are you thinking about buy from the black woman, the organization, but you're thinking about black women that you know that have businesses that you may have bought from and you can buy from. So that is how I make consumers aware of products and services of black women. You see the hashtag buy from a black woman, now you're, you're aware of businesses owned by black women. Sales, asking your customers to buy what it is your business offers and how you do it. So this would be your marketing vehicles, your um, Facebook advertisement, your billboards, your placement ads in your local newspaper or a national publication. Things that are a good fit 
for your business. You don't want to spend your marketing money advertising your business in places that will not serve your customer. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is very important when you're thinking about your marketing budget and how to reach and engage with a customer. Don't spend your dollars where your people do not shop. <laughs> so just, just word to the wise. So once you figured out what your marketing message was and the marketing vehicles you used to sell, identify how those marketing vehicles will transfer over to successful sales. So show yourself that you can reach your customer and actually convince them to buy what it is you're selling. An example of this would be, you know, my marketing message, educate, empower, inspire black women business owners and the people that support them. A marketing vehicle, my buttons, the buy from a black woman awareness button is there to help you think of, you know, buying from a black woman, more or less. So how do I convince my customers to buy what it is I'm selling? Get this awareness button so you can help spread awareness of businesses owned by black women so we can educate, empower, and inspire not just black women business owners, but the people who support them. Operations. Now you'll see on the screen, I just put a couple of key operation elements up there. Again, if it applies to you, use it. If it doesn't, take it away and throw in something that applies to you. But you want to include in your business plan a brief operation plan to help answer some key elements that will keep your business operational. Um, they shouldn't be overly detailed, but they should help you analyze any problems you might be facing and try to think through the situation. So with location, I'll just give just, you know, just a few thought provoking questions to help you answer some of these things. But location, where will you carry out your cell activity? Will you have a storefront? Will you go to events? Is it home base with an online presence? What are the benefits and disadvantages of your location? If you've got free building space, does your target market even come to that area? So is that really something that you want to include? These are things you need to think about. And this is how all of this works together to create a, create, to create a solid foundation for your business. Um, your production process, whether it's production or service, how do you plan on making whatever it is you sell? Are you ensuring delivery is consistent? Uh, for those of you who offer a service versus a product, think about the product you need to deliver your service. So how are you getting your service to the people? How is that? What does that look like? Um, inventory control. How are you managing this? How are you managing the items you are selling? If you're a service, how are you managing your time? Because that's inventory inventory control. Your time is your inventory and how you're able to perform that service to your customers. Your supplies, where are you getting them from? How are you getting them? What does that look like? Customer service. How will your product or your service get to your customer? This is the most effective way. Is your customer engaged with your product and your company and your business? Um, another quick story. Last night's class, I had a young lady and she was in the t-shirt business and prior to switching services, she used to hand mail, you know, on her own, mail out her T-shirt orders. And she was able to provide handwritten notes with that and also, you know, sometimes throwing extra things. And that made her customer and her customer service that just more personal, which was a strength for her company. But her inventory control, her scheduling, her personal time was lacking. So she went to a fulfillment center um, that changed from that, you know, personal touch to the customer ordering online and the fulfillment center just shifting straight to the customer. So she was no longer part of that process. So in her mind, that no longer was a strength. It became a weakness because part of Part of her marketing message and part of her branding was the personal interaction with the customer. 
So now she's looking into going back into that. So sometimes we try things and it's okay to try things because you never know what you need to work on or what you cannot do if you do not try to fix it. Um, Equipment. What equipment and technology services are required in order to run your business and to run it successfully? Computers, cell phone, hotspot support, all these things. And I'll talk more on these when we get to the financial part of it. But what is it that you need in order for your business to work? And be real about this. Do not try to say, well, I, I really need this, but I have this and this will do. And if that's the case, then plan to get what it is that you really need. Make a plan for what it is you really need and how long you can operate without it. And um, this is not listed on the screen, but your finance control system. How is your money being managed? What does that look like? Do you have a And if it's non-existent, do you have a plan for it to get existing in the future? Again, these are just some quick things to think about. Add what you need to add. Think about your operation plan. Think about how your business will operate for the next three months, six months, 12 months. And then think about how the plan goes for all of that. And what we're all here for and why we're all in business, um, you know, to stay in business is money. For those of you who have the workbook, you'll see the three worksheets. And those of you who don't, I've put the worksheets on the screen for you just to copy and write down. Um, I'll try to walk through slow to give you enough time to write down what's on the worksheets. But again, this is being recorded and you will be able to go back and review all this information I'm sharing with you tonight. Um... With these sample charts, I hope you get a reasonable picture of the financial future excuse me, of your business. Um, we'll go over three charts, your fixed assets, your startup expense list chart, your unit selling price and cost analysis chart, and your fixed expense chart. The first chart, your fixed assets startup expense list chart. This is the chart that you will use to determine how much it costs for you to go into business. So, again, write the things that work for you, the ones that don't take away and add into it. But this is just, again, just a little starter part for you to think about the situation. Land and building, what what does that cost? And if you are operating from your house, do you want to put your mortgage or your rent in this part? It's something real to think about. Um, As you become a business, you'll see that there are things you can write off. And if you're a home-based business, there is a part in your tax return, um, in your tax filing that has home-based business. And you can write that off. And I believe it's by square feet. So, you know, don't think just because you're working from home that it's not taxable. It is. And this is stuff that once you get an accounting, accountant and you're you know, environment, they'll be able to walk you through this. I am not an accountant. I just, you know, I know what I need to know to make sure that I don't get audited. So um, your equipment and your vehicles, I'll just reference back to the Uber driver. But if that is your business, how much does it cost for you to keep your equipment up and running? Are you leasing? Are you paying? Do you have a car payment? And if so, you need to put that in the cost if that's what you need to do. Oil change, car wash, detailing, all that stuff. How much does that cost to get started? Um, organizational costs, your legal form fees, all that stuff. How much does that cost to get started? And some of these things will be a one-time fee, but these are fee nonetheless. Um, and I'll go ahead and plug the Black Woman Business Grant. Um, we're doing a 500 grant for those of you who are not familiar is a 500 grand that we're doing for businesses that are in the startup process to help cover the cost of all these startup expenses that I'm going over now. So apply for the grant. Applications are open until June 30th, and then we'll be announcing the winner in the early part of July. But there will also be another grant after that and another one after that. So if you enter this time and you don't win, you'll have two more opportunities to win the Black Woman Business Grant. And that grant was to help start those who have a hesitation because they cannot 
cover all these startup expenses. There are one-time expenses, but they're expenses nonetheless. Um, your marketing and promotion costs. Starting a new business, you have to market and promote. Starting a new business, you have to market and promote. And unfortunately, social media is not enough. Word of mouth, depending on what your market is, it can be and it cannot be. But you need some type of marketing and promotion budget when you're starting up your business. Whether it be going to vending events in your neighborhood, paying for ads in the paper or the magazine, radio time, put some type of budget in there for your marketing promotions. Um, license and permits, again, if, if you're in food services, I know you need permits to cook certain things or to cook at certain places, licenses to operate certain equipment. Um, certifications and all that stuff if you're in certain fields what is the cost of that put that in there to figure out what it is you need to help get yourself started and then your beginning inventory your service or your product what does it cost to start making it so you can actually sell it <laughs> so put that in there and then forecast for how much product you want to make do you want to have at least three months worth of products six months 12 months and that comes from determining and forecasting out what your sales, your projected sales will be for that time period. And again, that's a whole nother conversation. But go ahead and put this stuff together and then figure out how much it costs for you to get started and figure out if that's feasible for where you're at right now. Um, small note, list major items individually and then group other smaller items like your office equipment into a single line item. So if to start off you need a computer and a printer, you know, put that together. And remember, like, that's a one-time cost. That's not something that you're going to, you know, have to pay every month or every year, hopefully not for a computer especially, you know, but this is something that you might need in the early stages. Unit seller price and cost analysis. Um, this is a, a copy. Again, this is something that you probably need to do and you should do for each product and service. And we'll just walk through this and figure out how to price this accordingly. Excuse me. So go ahead and start with, you know, what your product and your service is. And skip A for right now. But then write down how much the direct cost of materials are. How much does it cost for you to get everything you need to make that product or to provide that service. And then put a cost to your labor because your time is valuable. So how much are you charging for this? What does your labor look like? How much are you charging an hour or 30 minutes or however long for that? Then add that together to get the total cost per unit. Do not have your selling price be less than your total cost per unit because then you will have nothing to write and see your unit gross profit. So once you have your total cost per unit, then go ahead and price your item. This should track B from A to get your gross prof, your gross profit, excuse me, per unit. And then go ahead and divide A by C to get your gross profit percentage. Look at it and adjust accordingly to what you are comfortable with. These are your prices, it's your product, it's your service. So you determine this. But just make sure not to have your selling price lower than what it costs for you to put it together. Your fixed expense chart. This is a chart to help you formulate and plan for the next 12 months of your business. Again, you know... Take what works for you, X out what doesn't apply to you, add things that are not even listed here. But go ahead and put it together so you can get a good idea of what your first year looks like and what that expense and profit and all that stuff. And forecast your revenue for each month. If you think certain months are going to be better than others, forecast that and plan accordingly for that. And then again, if there's certain things that you don't need until certain months, plan it out but this is to help you think about that and get that started and see what that year is going to look like and how to plan according for that you might not need business and health insurance because you're doing it with your spouse or with your full-time job or 
you know, the Obama plan is really helping out, whatever it is. So that would be something that you don't put on there. And, you know, maybe marketing is every other month you pay for that. Or maybe your postage, your P.O. box that you're paying for, you pay it every six months. Plan out your year. And also remember, when you're doing your taxes, that there's certain things that are tax deductible. So like your, your vehicle, for example. If you're using your vehicle as your main source of transportation for your business, you can write that off. Your cell phone. Cell phone companies have small business contracts. They're not advertised on the main websites. This is stuff you have to ask to get these discounts. So always ask for small business discounts. Like, do you have a small business discount? It never. If they say no, what have you lost? But when they say yes, you're gaining so much. So don't be afraid to ask these questions because you don't know what you're missing out. Even with util- utilities, you can go to the SBA, the Small Business Administration, and find certain utility companies that offer discounts for small business owners, especially minority small business owners. You'll be surprised extra funding that certain companies do because they have this money and they need to apply to somewhere else. But do not go to these places if you do not have your paperwork in order (laughs) because they're going to want to see it just to make sure that you're doing the things you have to do. So we'll just bring it all back together. We went over what your business is, what that looks like, what makes you unique to your target market and how you can reach them and where they're at. And who else is reaching them through your competitive analysis and what makes your strength, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats work or don't work for your business. And then we went over your marketing, your sales and your operation plan and then your money of how to price your units for what you're selling and how much it's going to cost for you to get started. And also, what is that first year going to look like? Um, I hope you enjoy this. I hope I answered some questions that you might have thought of. And I hope I was able to provide you with some other questions that you didn't think of to help you get started with your business. If you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to reach me at info at buyfromablackwoman.com. Um, If you're not already, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And I enjoy engaging with you guys. This was um, talking at the screen is very unique because, you know, even though there are questions that would pop up, being able to interact with you on a one-on-one is something that I enjoy doing. So I hope to meet more of you in the future and get through it um there was one question she said how do i know how to how do i know what i should price my items and again as i spoke make sure you're not pricing your items for less than what it costs you to make it i cannot tell you what you know you should charge for your labor i cannot even tell you what you should charge for your item but just make sure that you make some of a profit even if it's a dollar You want to make a profit. Don't go into business to make a loss. Um, Thank you guys so much for attending and good luck. Bye.